So I want to start off by saying that when God makes you free, he makes you free for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to serve him. So I looked at Exodus 8 this morning, and when the Lord spoke to Moses and he sent Moses before Pharaoh, he told Moses one specific thing that he wanted to be communicated for his people to be free. And I'm going to read that real quick. Exodus 8 verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him. Thus says the Lord. Let my people go. That they may serve me. And so God's ultimate purpose. And desire for the children of Israel being free. Was simply for them to serve the Lord their God. So God doesn't make us free for our own good. God doesn't make us free so that we do whatever we want, whatever inclinations, whatever our hearts desire. God does not make us free so that we can belong to ourselves. God makes us free so that we can serve him and we only desire him. He's our one and only. He's our only God. And so this is why God makes us free. And so there is only, there's only room for one. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. You cannot be a partaker of the Lord's table in the tables of devils. You have to pick a side. You have to choose one. And so God makes this clear several times. God reiterates why he wants his people to be set free. I'm not making them free so that they can go and build a name for themselves and, you know, they can go and 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 make a molten image or, you know, make statues or make idols. No, I am making them free. I want my people I want my people let go free from bondage so that they can serve me so that I can be their only God. You know, that's one of the commandments is that we should have no other God. We should not worship any other God. The word of God says in Deuteronomy and also Exodus that the Lord our God is a jealous God. He is a consuming fire but he's also jealous. His name is jealous. He's jealous for you. He's jealous for me. And so he's not the he's not the kind of of person who doesn't mind sharing. Like, like no, God is jealous. He only wants you. He does not want to share. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful that he's a God who does not want to share. You know, in that in that sense. He's selfish because he's jealous. Not that he's jealous of the, of the other person or the enemy or, you know, what you want to give yourself to. No, no, he's jealous because his love for you outweighs everything else. His love for you outweighs, you know, you wanting to be free and living your own life. Like, no, I want you. And it's one of those... It's one of those situations where the only way that you're going to leave me is through death. That's the only way. And so God is like, if I can't have you, nobody else can have you. I want you. And this is how the Lord was towards the children of Israel all throughout the Old Testament. You know, the Lord, <laughs> he communicated and he demonstrated that, hey, if I cannot have you, nobody can. And so with the children of Israel, you know, there were times where they would set up these high places and they would set up these statues and they would make molten images and they would make, you know, false God. They would build these false gods and they would worship them. And even in Egypt, they were worshiping idols. They were worshiping false gods until they realized that the gods that they were serving could not help. And they began to actually cry out to the real God, you know? And so the Lord began to tell them, hey, if you continue to serve other other gods and make these images and do these things, then I'm going to give you over to those things. I'm going to cause your enemies to overtake you. I'm going to cause your children to be sick. I'm going to take away my word. There's going to be a famine of the word of God and you're not going to be able to have access to it. Why does God go through all of, I don't even want to say trouble, but he goes through all of the effort. I saw someone make, make a post or reshare a post yesterday of God has to fight us so that he can bless us because he's jealous. And so what he's doing throughout the Old Testament with the children of Israel is that he's he's fighting for his love for them. He's trying to get them to turn from their idols and to serve him. Why? Because he wants to bless them. He wants to love them. He wants them 
to be his people so that he can be their God. And so that is the same day. That's, that's, that's the same thing today with the children of God, with professed believers. And so my message is specifically and mainly directly to professed believers because the world has already been judged and condemned. And so I have to address the hypocrisy. I have to address the double mindedness because that's what Jesus did with the Pharisees. He had to address the, the pretense, the fakeness, the hypocrisy. And so I have to address the same thing because that's an issue in our, our, our generation. That's an issue in our generation. And so although people may not be building statues, they may not be taking wood and stone and carving statues. However, they have built idols in their hearts and they're unwilling to this to destroy them and to knock them down and to uproot them. And God is jealous. And so because he's so jealous for those that are, to are supposed to be his, he will bring judgment as a result of his love. Because even in God's judgment, his love is there. Why? Because he corrects those that he loves. He corrects those that he loves. And so the fact that you have people who are professed believers participating in satanic holidays and opening up themselves to the world, you know, worldliness, God sees that and God will judge that. And so God is saying, hey, you have to let go of the idols of your heart. And so you cannot be a professed believer, but you still partake in the things of the world. I believe it's Paul that says that we have to come out from among them and be separate. And so light cannot, light cannot commune with dark. You cannot have a blend of light and dark. Either you're going to be hot or you're going to be cold and you have to make a decision. And so although you may not be worshiping physical images and physical statues, there are idols in your heart that God is saying that you need to remove. You know, God told the people at one point, you need to remove the high places. You need to remove the high places. You need to destroy these molten images. You know, most, most of the children of Israel the moment they left um, Egypt, you know, they had they they built uh, a molten calf because they wanted a God that they can see. Although they saw the miracles of the God they couldn't see, they wanted to serve a God that they could see, but that was worthless. And that man got very angry when Moses was up on the the mountain in a high place receiving the. Ten Commandments, the Lord told Moses, you know, go down unto your people because they've defiled themselves by raising up idols, by making a golden calf, by putting something else before me. I'm supposed to be the only God. Like, I am the one that searches your heart and the rings of your heart according to your ways. I am. I am the one that blesses you. I am the one that allows the sun to shine on the just and the unjust and the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. I am, I am the Lord your God. That's why throughout the word of God, he constantly addresses himself as that. No, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Remember who brought you, who brought you freedom. Remember who set you free. It wasn't that, that fake God that you were praying to. It wasn't the God of Egypt. It wasn't the God that you all made from metal, wood and stone. No, it was I, the Lord your God. I am. The Lord told Moses, to go before Pharaoh and Moses said, well, what, what do I say? Let him know that the I am sent you. And so that's who he is. And so God is still jealous today because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so although things may not look like they did back then as far as the wrath of God, but do know that it's coming because God is jealous for his children. He's jealous for his people. And so he's not okay with the fact that you profess to be a believer, but yet you partake in satanic holidays. He's not okay with the fact that you were you refuse to, you refuse to let go of the idols of your heart. You can't let go of the sports entertainment. You can't let go of the worldly circular music. You can't let go of the worldly TV shows. Yeah. He's saying that there's only room for one. You cannot have a place for me and a place for other high things. No, those high things, they must come down. Those high things must come down because there's only room for one. And that's me. That's the Lord, your God, the God of all creation, the God of heaven and earth, the God that makes you free and the, and the God that has the power to destroy your body and cast it in, into hell and your soul. 
You know, so there's only room for one. Although you, we would love to have our cake and eat it too. We would love to be able to serve God and serve the devil and serve the world. But it doesn't work like that. God is jealous. And he's one of those people, hey, there's only room for me. There's only room for me. He's not like the relationships in the world where it's open. You know what I mean? I've heard people <laughs> over the years say, you know, well, we have an open relationship. And what that means is we are open to engaging other individuals. God is not like that at all. He is not in agreement. He does not support an open relationship. Why? Because there's only room for one. He made that clear with the children of Israel. Although there was a time, you know, when you read the book of Samuel, there was a time where they didn't want just God anymore. Excuse me. They didn't want just God anymore. They went to Samuel and they told Samuel, hey, man, you're getting old. You're getting old. So we want a king like all the other nations. Wait, wait a minute. You have God. God is the only king that you need. God is the only husband that you need. God is the only lover that you need. Why are you searching anywhere else? Does not he pro does he not provide you your corn wine and your oil? Does not he bless you? Does not he feed you? And the children of Israel feel like, no, we want somebody that we can see. We want a king that we can see. You know, yeah, we know we know God has been there. He's been there, you know, for our fathers, but we want a king. So the Samuel went to the Lord and the Lord said, well, give them a king. Give them the desires of their heart. Give them what they want. They want something that they can physically see. And so although people profess to be Christian, they want things that they can physically see. They want things that entice them. They want things that, you know, pleases their desire, their inner desires. No, I, I like these types of things. Although it's evil. Although it's evil, and you can see evil all over. I, there's a thrill that I get on the inside. There's a drive, a drilling that I get seeing evil things and, and participating in the things of the world. There's a drill I get, yeah, but that's affecting you spiritually. That's draining your appetite for the Lord. You know, that's making you feel like it's okay to have an open relationship. And like I said, God is not one who is okay with open relationships. No, the world, people in the world are okay with open relationships to where, you know, we can, we can, I can date this person and I can engage this person and be sexual act, sexually active with this person. And we're, me and my partner, we're okay with that because this relationship is open. God is not that way. It's only room for one. Either it's him or it's no one. It's no one. He made that clear to the children of Israel. Hey, if I can't have you, nobody can have you. Nobody can have you, and I'm going to begin to make you think that you can have other things, and you're going to see how you need me. You're going to see how these things fail you, because you're, gonna ne you're, you're never going to find any anybody like God. You're never going to find anybody like God. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they can do. They may be the God of the crops. They may be the God of the weather, but there is no one like God. God is over all things. You know, the idols of the world are what we must tear down because idolatry is what's going to cause many to miss out on eternal life because they could not let go of the idols of their heart. John says, little children, keep yourself from idols. Keep yourself from idols because there's only room for one. If you make room for these idols, then there's not going to be any place for God in your heart. Why? Because there's only room for one. You cannot make room for both. You cannot say, well, I can I can do both. I can maintain a double life. No, it's impossible to live a double life. It's impossible. I believe it's Paul that says a double-minded man is a, a James. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. There's going to be you're going to be unstable. You're not going to be able to keep yourself because you cannot. It's like somebody who's having an affair and they're trying to keep it a secret. That's only going to be hidden for so long until it comes out. You're not going to be able to balance the two. You're trying to manage this marriage, but also this relationship on the side. We all know how that turns out. We know eventually that person gets caught up. That person gets caught. They try to juggle two ways of life. They try to manage being two ways, being one way here and another way there. And that's going to fail. So even in the natural, we understand that you cannot juggle two lives. And so in the body of Christ, you cannot juggle two lives. The word of God said that God will vomit you out. He will spit you out. That's what he told one of the churches in Revelation. So he says, either you need to be hot be on fire for me 
or be cold, serve the world. Because you cannot serve God and mammon. And so you cannot juggle two lives. You cannot juggle a life as a Christian, but then a life as a worldly person. No, either you're going to gravitate more to God or you're going to gravitate more to the world. And that's called backsliding. And so I've not met one person who was able to juggle both because you can't do it. You're going to be unstable. You cannot be a partaker of the Lord's table and read and quote scriptures, but then you're doing worldly things. No, either you're going to be this person or you're going to be that person. Either you're going to have your idols or you're going to learn to tear them down. You're going to learn to tear down the idols of your heart. You're going to learn to hate the things of the world. Because God hates those things. So if God hates it, then you should have a desire to hate it. You know, Proverbs says, all of those that hate me love death. You hate God. Why? Because you, you love death. You like the, the spirit of death. Why? Because you partake in satanic holidays. You partake in demonic practices. You may not call it that, but that's what it is. We like to dress it up. I heard one of my brothers call it the nostalgia of romance. We like to dress it up and make it pretty and, you know, call it something else. We're not going to call it Halloween. We're not going to call it the Devil's Day. No, we're going to call it the Harvest Festival. We're going to call it Trunk or Treat or the, or the Holy Ghost Tree. We're going we're gonna to dress it up and make it pretty, but it's still that. It's still a golden calf. You can put Jesus on it all you want. You can put scripture on it all you want, but it's still a golden calf. It's still an idol. It's still a graven image that God hates, and it's replacing God because there's only room for one. You cannot have both. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. I'm sorry to tell you that, but you cannot have both. There's only room for one God, and you got to make a decision which God. Is that going to be the God of the world, which is Satan? The word of God calls him the prince of this world, or that's going to be the God of all creation, the one that has power to destroy your life. He can either make or break your life. God can. God has that power. And you got to acknowledge that before it's too late. And so this is more so of a warning because God sees what is happening. And he desires that, hey, you got to pick a side. It's okay if you don't want me fully. It's okay if you don't want to fully commit. That's fine. But you got to pick a side. You cannot juggle two lifestyles. Like I said, it reminds me of someone that's trying to, you, you have a marriage, but you're trying to maintain an affair as well. Like, you're only going to be able to juggle that for so long until it comes out. And now you look crazy. Yeah. How long did you think you were going to keep this a secret? How long did you think you were going to be able to do this? No, you cannot juggle two lifestyles. You cannot be one way in church. And then when you leave church, you're worldly. You're carnal. You curse. You know, you let your kids dress up in demonic costumes that if they were to manifest in the natural, you would run away. You would run away. So it's so interesting to me. How people, you know, they, they fear spiritual things when it comes to like ghosts and, 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 and spirits, yet they engage these things. Like it, it's, it's, hip, it's hypocrisy to the point where, you know, we don't mind putting graveyards in front of our houses. We don't mind putting skeletons in front of our houses and other demonic creatures. I saw something the other day that I can't even describe to you because I've never even seen it before. But it was such a demonic Halloween, I guess, the decoration. But it was so demonic. It was like a, a human body, but it had like a beak face and something was coming out of the mouth. It was, it was very disturbing to look at. But this is what the world likes. The world, they not only like darkness, but they like death. You know, Jesus says that, no, you... you Men love darkness rather than light, but not just that. They like death. And you know that man likes death because they hate God. They hate his ways. They hate his commandments. They hate the fact that he says, hey, you have to let go of your idols. No, I don't want to let go of my idols because a part of me, you know, is attached to my idols. A lot of people, they don't realize that a part of them is attached to those idols. There's a soul tie. There's a connection. And this is why he says that all the high things, they must come down. They must be uprooted. You have to renounce the idols of your heart and the idols of your fathers. That's what he told the children of Israel. Let go of the idols of your fathers because they did the same thing. They built statues and they set up these high places and they built molten images and graven images and it replaced me. But there's only room for one. You can have these things, but they're not going to bless you. You're going to bring a curse on your life. People don't realize that they've cursed their house. They've cursed their house right now with all of these demonic satanic things they're cursing their house they're cursing their lives and they're not gonna 
It's not going to register in their mind while their world is falling apart. Yeah, Halloween is going to be over in 16 hours or, you know, the next the next couple of hours. And people don't realize that they've already forfeited some things. Yeah, you, par you participated in this day, although you're a professed believer. You participated in this day and it's not going to register that you just lost something. You're not going to even be able to discern it. You're not going to feel it. All you know is that you're going to begin to lose your appetite for the Lord and you're going to want more of the world. Wait, wait a minute. What happened to you? Yeah, you don't realize you, you lost something. Something was taken from you. Why? Because you gave a part of what's, what's supposed to belong to God. You gave it to something else. God is supposed to have your heart in all of it. Not a piece of it, not a portion. Your whole heart. Your whole heart God is supposed to have. But you gave it to another thing. People don't realize that participating in these satanic holidays and pagan holidays, that's worship. That is worship. And like I said in the beginning of this video, God made the children of Israel free for one purpose. God makes you and I free for one purpose, and that is to worship him, not anything else. And so if I'm worshiping something else, if I am partaking in something else, then I'm giving myself to that thing. This is why God said that you should not have any other idols, because with the idols come, comes worship. With the idols comes worship. And so it may not be a physical statue for you. And it may not be even Halloween for you. You may say, well, I don't have that problem. I understand that today is a satanic holiday. I understand that today is an evil day. But yeah, what about the fact that you still, you watch the NFL. You still are engaged in the sports industry. Although you are a professed believer. You have to watch the game. And listen, if those things have your heart, that's an idol. You are giving yourself and your time to these things and that's a problem god is a jealous god it may be the the worldly social life where you know you are engaged on twitter and and TikTok and facebook and you follow different politics and you follow different motivational speakers and you you follow this person although this person shows evidence of worldliness you, there's something about them that you like and you just gravitate to and you can't help but to follow them and you take in their words and their advice and you 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 know you you apply what you got from that person yeah that person is taking something from you that that can be an idol anything that replaces god and it has a it has a a, a place in your heart that's an idol that's an idol and that has to be uprooted that has to be torn down and destroyed because there's only room for both. You cannot have you cannot have both. You cannot have God and still hold on to the things of the world. You have to let it go. You have to let it go. This is why John can say that we we must be in the world but not of the world. You have to let those things go. He said he said that these are the things that are of the world. Yes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. All of these things that you were once given to, you have to let them go. Why? Because there's only room for one. I cannot have all of these things and God as well. I cannot say that God is good and I love God and, you know, I know God and I love my Jesus, but yet I, I use profanity, but yet I still think that it's okay to engage in these types of relationships and go to these types of places and watch these types of things on TV. Some may say, but there's no cursing in it. It has a clean storyline. I've had people tell me that in the past. Well, I still watch these things on TV. Well, why do you do that when they're promoting adultery why do you still like these tv shows when they're promoting you know fornication and they're promoting pornography and masturbation well it has a clean storyline there's no cursing in it yeah but there's an agenda behind it you don't realize that this is contrary to the word of god and his will and his purpose for your life god has called you out of the world so that you can worship him god didn't call you out he didn't make you a son so that you can be worldly he didn't make you a son so that you could be double-minded and he didn't make you a son so that you could be carnal no he made you a son so that you can be like him. And so all of your ways has to resemble God. If God hates these things, you need to hate them too. And you need to start now. No, that stuff is evil. You have to see it for what it is. It's amazing to me how people can profess to be Christian yet be still blind. Like the Pharisees. They told Jesus, are we, you know, are, are we, you know, also blind? You are blind. Your sin remains. You say that you're not blind, yet your sin remains, yet you can't even 
You can't even discern the basic fundamental things. You overlook those things. You don't see nothing wrong with that. You're a hypocrite. You're fake. You present yourself to be one way. And before men, you pray a certain way, you talk a certain way, you dress a certain way, but behind closed doors, you're the opposite of what you present to be. You're the opposite. Yeah, you're a pastor. Yeah, you're a minister online, and you're this way before the people, but apart from that, you're very worldly. You have fake things, fake hair, fake eyelashes, fake nails, fake body parts, and it's worldly, and God sees it, and he's saying, my desire is to make you holy. My desire is not that you look like the world, but that you look like me. And so he's saying that you have to let go of the idols of your heart. You're the world. People don't realize that they still have the world attached to them. What's interesting is that I was looking at some pictures this morning from some years ago. And I had, I had something about me that is no longer there now, praise God. But as I was looking at that picture... I was like, wow, like I look, I look a little worldly. I look a little worldly, you know, not, not fully, but just the fact that I had that on me. I'm like, man, I kind of look, you know, I, I look different. I look different. And so the more you stay in the will of God, the more you are faithful to God, he will begin to purge you of the world. And so I'm not saying all of it's going to be gone overnight, but if you are open and, and if you are available, God can begin to show you those areas that are worldly. Hey, take out that fake hair. It's not yours. I want the real you. I want the real you. I don't want no fake you because nothing, nothing about God is fake. Everything about God is real. And so he desires a real relationship. No, when you come before him, he wants all of you, all of what he made, all of what he created, all of what he put there. That's what he wants. He doesn't want to fake you. The world wants a fake you. The devil wants a fake you. The world is okay. <clears throat> excuse me. The world is okay with you being a fake person because it's a fake world. And so the world, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with you being, you know, having fake lashes and the fake nails and, you know, being something that you're not. But God is like, no, you got to be holy. No, you got to destroy these idols. No, you got to renounce that. You got to confess that. You got to repent of that. Why? Because I want to make you a son. I want to make you like me. And there's only room for me. There's not room for anything else. There's not room for even you. No, there's room for only God. He didn't say that you and I will reign on the throne of your hearts. No, only me. I am jealous for you. I love you. I made you. I called you out of sin so that you can serve me. I called you out of sin so that you can worship me. Why? Because that's what I desire with my people. We are the Lord's people. We were made and created in his image. And so when he sees us, he desires to see himself. He, does, he doesn't want to see, you know, the fact that you, you were inspired by this makeup artist. He doesn't, he doesn't, when he encounters you, he don't want to see that person. He wants to see you. He doesn't care that you were inspired by that hairstyle, that hairstylist or whatnot. He, he doesn't care that you were inspired by that, that sport athlete. And now you dress that way. When you come to church, you're very carnal. You're very worldly. You feel like you have to be like the world to win the world. No. When God sees you, he wants to see himself. He wants to see what he's, he, what he desires to make out of you. And so when he convicts your heart and he says, hey, you got to let that go. Let it go. Don't hold on to it. Let it go. If God is saying, let go of the fake stuff. Let go of the worldly attire. You have a lot of professed believers. Now, they look worldly. You have a lot of Christian rappers. They look worldly. Like, wait a minute. I don't, I don't know what you are. And so if I don't know what you are, God doesn't know what you are. You look strange. You look strange. You got people setting up strange fire before the Lord and want to confess to know God. You do not know God. You do not know the God of the Bible. Because if you knew the God of the Bible, then you will follow his commands. You will obey his commands. But because you hate him, you love death. You are, you are in agreement with death. That's what it says in the Proverbs. All of those that hate me love death. You like death. You like the looks of death. You may not say it, but your actions speak that you love death. All of those that hate me, they love death. Why? Because if you, if you really love God like you say you did, then you would get rid of those idols. Yeah, you would, you would get rid of those things that you know offends God. You would get rid of the strange things. Instead of setting up strange fire, no, you get rid of the strange things. You get rid of the accursed thing. Man, this is an offense to God. I got to get rid of it. I can't, I can no longer agree with the idols of my heart. I can no longer agree with the idols of the world. It has to stop. It has to end. Yeah. And then most people wonder why they can't get a breakthrough. They wonder why they're not free. Yeah. You have idols and let the Lord show you those idols. The Lord will. If you ask, Lord, show me. 
the areas of my hearts where I still have idols so that they can be torn down. Why? Because there's only room for one. There's only room for you. And I have to make room for God in my heart. I need God to expand my, expand my heart so that he can fill it with more of him. And so it needs to be less of us, less of the world, more of God. God wants to occupy the space in your heart. God wants to fulfill the, the, the space in your heart. And so there cannot be nothing else there. If it is, you need to clean it out. You need to clean it out. It needs to go. It needs to be uprooted. You got to destroy it. You have to destroy the idols of your heart. Otherwise, it's going to overtake you. It's going to overtake you. You're going to give yourself to those things and worship is going to be involved. You may not look at it like that, but no worship is going to be involved. You give yourself to that. You give your time that you give your heart to that. Yeah, that's your God now. And that's going to fail you, but God will never fail you. And that's what he wanted the children of Israel to understand. Listen, you don't need nobody else. You don't need no, no king. You don't need no other God. I am the only God that you need. And I want to love you. I want to bless you. And so may the spirit of God, may he give you ears to hear. Jesus says, all of those that have ears to hear, let them hear. Because not everybody is going to hear when the spirit of God is speaking. When the spirit of God is trying to come in and He's trying to bring freedom. He's not trying to bring bondage. He's not trying to, you know, bring um, a level of control to where, you know, you don't have no freedom and life is boring and life is horrible. No, he's trying to make you free because you don't, you don't, you don't know what spirit you are of. You don't know what's bewitching you. You don't know what's causing you to be desensitized. You don't know what's blinding you. And so Jesus Christ is trying to shine a light. He's trying to shine a light on the truth so that you can see clearly because your idols will blind you. Your idols will blind you. The people of the world will blind you. The enemy will blind you. And you will not be able to see when the Lord is trying to bring freedom in your life. You will not be able to see when he's trying to bless you. You know, his intentions for you are good. His ways, his desires for you are good. They're pure. No, I want to love you. I want to make you free. That's why I'm calling you out of Egypt because I want to make you free to serve me. I'm not calling you out of Egypt, you know, to make life harder for you. You know, the, the children of Egypt felt like God was trying to make life hard for them. Wait, you brought us to a Red Sea, Moses. How are we going to get across? Wait, you brought us out into the wilderness to die? Wait, where's the food? You know, we had all types of things back in the world. We had all types of things back in Egypt. We had idols. We had idols. We had graven images. You know, we had pleasures. So what are you and God doing, Moses? What, what's happening? What's happening? You know, where's the meat? You know, where, where's the food? Where's, where's the water? Where's the water? Yeah. All of those things will blind you and make you think that God doesn't have your best interest at heart. That God is trying to do more harm than good. No, God is trying to bless you. He's trying to make you free. He's trying to open your eyes so that you can see. And when he opens your eyes, you know, that's not for you to say, man, I know it all. Like, no. He wants you to stay clean and pure and holy. He desires a holy people. And so not everybody's going to make it in because not everybody's going to be able to let go of their idols. You cannot have no idols where you are going. If, you're, if your desire is to spend forever with God, you cannot bring all of this extra stuff. You got to let it go. There's only room for one. There's only room for one, and you're going to make room one, one way or the other. So either there is going to be room for God and only God, or you're going to make room for another God, and you get to decide who's going to reign on the throne of your heart because somebody is reigning. Somebody, and if you can be your own idol. You can be in the way. And so either it's going to be you, the things of the world, or it's going to be God, and you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision who you want to be. Do you want to be a hot person? Or do you want to be a cold person? Do you want to be lukewarm? You can't have both. Do you want to be double-minded? Do you want to be classified as a hypocrite? Is that what you want to be known as? A hypocrite? You're just a hypocritical person. You, you're you playing two, two lives. You're living two ways. And you're okay with that? No. You got to make a decision. You either have to be black or white. No grays. No grays. And so may the Spirit of God bless you in Jesus' name.